His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Qudaybiyah Palace senior members of the royal family, intellectuals, media figures, businessmen, state officials, and scores of citizens, and discussed with them regional and international issues. His Royal Highness called on GCC citizens to be cautious and vigilant against plots targeting the security and stability of their countries and to remain united in facing such evil plots, voicing trust that GCC leaders are capable of safeguarding their countries and maintain their hard won achievements thanks to their wisdom and unified stances. He said that past Arab nations' experiences are difficult lessons that must be learned from to help them to strengthen cooperation and joint action and boost their security and stability. He also praised the awareness and creativity enjoyed by the people of Bahrain, as well as their achievements at regional and international levels. He affirmed that Bahraini people are aware of their surroundings and are considered role models in loyalty and patriotism. The Prime Minister stressed his personal interest and keenness to communicate with citizens and follow up their needs in all areas across the kingdom and directed all concerned government bodies to speed up resolving difficulties encountered by citizens. He underlined the role played by journalists and writers in presenting and analysing local and international issues. He also valued the role played by Saudi Arabia in defending the security and stability of the Arab and Islamic nations and its remarkable efforts in serving pilgrims and ensuring the success of the Hajj season. He called on pilgrims to abide by the rules and regulations set by Saudi Arabia in order to perform Hajj peacefully. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also chaired a meeting today in which he approved a development project supporting tourism infrastructure in Muharraq. The project, with a cost reaching 45 million BD, links Muharraq suit to a modern wharf waterfront through a footbridge. The project includes services and facilities such as a hotel with multi-storey car parks, cafes and restaurants, all of which support tourism in the city of Muharraq. The project comes in line with His Royal Highness directives to increase development projects that boost commerce and tourism in Muharraq. He listened to detailed technical explanation about the project presented by Deputy Prime Minister, Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister stressed that the government places great importance on executing vital and development projects that serve people and reinforce the government's efforts in developing tourism in various areas of Bahrain, especially in Muharraq for its rich historical and cultural heritage. He also directed to obtain public tenders for the project as soon as possible.
Under the patronage of the Minister of Health, Dr. Faiqal Salah, a playroom dedicated to the Children Oncology Ward was inaugurated today. More details in this report with Sarah Bureik. Selmania Medical Complex has now a beautifully constructed playroom with a glass roof for sunlight exposure. The playroom's important lays in the normal developmental needs of children. It promotes learning, growth and development. It also provides relaxation, fun and especially socialization. We are I mean, very happy that excited that we have uh, such a room for the children that they are suffering from the cancer disease. Uh, this room is uh, considered as educational room for uh, all the children who are in the Salmania hospital. And we, I mean, uh, we are thankful for uh, all the people that uh, Omnia Tofel, that uh, they uh, provided this, uh, such a room. And we hope that they will get benefit from this because it's a matter of a psychological uh, issue that for the children, all the patients, not only the children, uh, if you don't treat them uh, as a psychological uh, uh, taking care of them, uh, may maybe they will uh, be uh, f uh, feeling, I mean, suffering a lot. The room was there, but it's just a, a little bit of renovating the, uh, the toys and having a new extension to allow the sunshine for, sunshine for, the, for the kids, especially when they are treating themselves as at, at home and uh, missing, missing the playing time in the, at the park. So it's, it's really a pleasant um, to see everybody's happy, happy today with the great changes here. When children are sick in the hospital, their usual routines are disrupted and they may be separated from their families and other familiar people for periods of time. Being able to play while in the hospital means that children can continue an aspect of their normal life. Playing time can help children become more at ease with the unfamiliar surroundings and experiences of a hospital. They also express their feelings and worries about treatments, which help them to feel less anxious. Playing provides an opportunity for children to make choices so they can retain a sense of some control. And one of the things that affected me was uh, they had a place for kids to play in. And uh, I was there 24-7. And it really affected the way I uh, saw cancer, the way I uh, fought with cancer. I wish we had something like this from where I come from. Uh, this could be a, a good example for us, you know, to start working on. So for me, what treated me was, uh, uh, it was uh, the mental ability. And the mental ability came when I started recognizing myself, which is through playing Sony, playing uh, billiards and all these stuff. Coming to the hospital is never a happy occasion. It's either visiting someone sick or it's either being sick themselves. But for children, it's even worse, especially those receiving chemotherapy here almost on a daily basis. But this little project from Child Wish Foundation or Society has made it possible for the children to have a place in the hospital for them to have fun and feel good in. This is Sarah Burek for Bahrain 55. Education Minister Dr. Majid Nuaimi went on a field visit to public schools in different governorates where he met members of the educational and administrative panels in their first day back to school with the start of the new academic year. While the minister made sure work was up to standard, he recommended or he commanded the effective role of the educators, particularly teachers, as they are the core of the educational process. He affirmed that the ministry works to develop the educational environment every year through creating a comfortable ambience that enhances the school's performance and work cycle. He stated that the reason behind setting an earlier date for teachers and administrators to get back to school than students is to prepare an appropriate environment for the students, design and distribute teacher schedules and have preparatory meetings and workshops. Dr. Naimi pointed out that the ministry under the wise leadership has finished preparing for the new academic year. It is now ready to receive 140,000 students, among which 10,000 are new in 208 schools as well as 18,000 teachers and administrators. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Chairman of the Health and Vocational Safety Council, Jamil Ben Mohammed Humaydan, announced that the noon outdoor work ban for this summer has been remarkably successful. He said 80 or rather 98.9% of the concerned companies and establishments have complied with the rule 
that bans forcing laborers to work under the scorching heat of the summer sun from noon to 4 p.m. He said the unprecedented compliance rate is a fruitful outcome of the leadership's keenness on ensuring the health and safety of workers. The minister added that the compliance rate of the concerned size indicates their keenness to protect workers and ensure their safety, which he said reflects the respect of human rights culture prevailing in the kingdom. He explained that the Labour Ministry specialised team had made surprise regular inspection visits to 10,053 work sites during the ban and reported 106 violations, adding that 235 workers were victims. The penalty inflicted on violators is a jail term not exceeding three months, a 500 to 1,000 BD fine or even both. Good evening, you're watching the business news on Bahrain TV. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,141.32 points, falling 2.27 below last closing. The fall was in the services and industrial sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector with 62% of total shares. 34 transactions included 1,127,202 shares worth 250,565 BD. Good evening and welcome to the Sports News on Bahrain TV. The organizing committee of the 4th Khalid bin Hamad Youth Center's Fustal League is putting the finishing touches for the final match. The closing ceremony will include programs, especially since the final day will have three matches. The first match starts to determine the third and fourth place teams of the Youth Center's Fustal League. The second match to determine the winners of the People with Disability League will start with the Al-Haraki Society team facing the death team and the final match will see the winners of yesterday's match facing each other. The semi-finalists were decided after Abu Saiba defeated Karana in the quarterfinals with a score of 3-1 and Safra qualified by beating Salmabad in the penalty shootouts. As for Zalag, they reached the semi-finals by defeating South Sehla in the penalty shootout and al Shahura qualified after defeating Karbabad with a score of 4-0. In their second friendly, Bahrain will face Jordan today at the Bahrain National Stadium. The Asian Cup will be held in the UAE in 2019. This is the second match under the supervision of Bahrain's new coach, Miroslav Skop. The Bahrain Football Association has signed him up in July on a two-year contract to succeed Sergio Batista. Bahrain scored three penalties to defeat Singapore in their first international friendly at the Bahrain National Stadium. Bahrain qualified for the Youth World Handball Championship in Georgia after reaching the final of the 7th Asian Handball Championship following a 23-19 win over Qatar at the Khalifa Sports City Hall in Isa Town. Yesterday's match saw the largest crowd turnout in the tournament as fans cheered the team from the start until the last minute. The Bahraini players put up a brilliant performance to outplay a tough Qatari side who came out better than their previous game against South Korea. <laughs> 